Hi, welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit more about iMovie, dig a little bit deeper, and see how to really enhance this 30 second commercial that you're doing based on a particular theme. Now, even though iMovie comes free with the Macintosh, it's part of the iLife uh, suite with iPhoto and GarageBand, don't let the simplicity fool you. This can get really deep. Let's look into a few things that will really help you fine tune your creation. So I'm looking at the iMovie interface and I'm looking at my project. As I skim over these different uh, pieces of footage, I can see them in the viewer window. But let's say I want to make uh, some minor adjustments. If I double click between these two clips, kind of on that edit point, what I get is the precision editor window. The precision editor window lets me fine tune the exact place where I'm going to make my edit. Now there's two, excuse me, three ways that I can be making changes in here. One way is to grab the edge of this when I'm on this top clip and gradually change the edit point to a new place within the clip. Now you can see that I'm moving the bottom and the rest of the footage a little bit longer as I find a new edit point in the top clip. The other way I can do it uh, conversely is with the bottom clip. If I change the size of the top clip or, or the distance as I I'm actually changing the size of the bottom clip and the exact point where I want it to come in. Let's say I like it right there when the flag is a little more visible. Now I can also change both edit points together. Let's say I've got an exact 30 second commercial. I just want to change where the in point is and where the out point is on these particular clips. I could grab this dot in the middle and change those together. Now, let me close this for a second and review again how we got to this point. Let me click on my a new event, Extreme Sports 2, and this is some footage of someone surfing. Let's say I want to start right here when the wave is breaking behind them. I'm going to click and drag to the right and select that portion of the clip. I'm going to put this up into the timeline it goes right in order with the other clips. Let's double click the line and the space between those to get the precision editor. Down in the bottom here with the surfing clip, this is the footage that we call a handle that was not part of my initial selection. Remember I started my end point here where the wave started breaking. Well, let's say I changed my mind. Now I want it a little bit earlier. In the precision editor, I can drag that starting point a little bit earlier into the clip. That's where you would find that footage. I'm going to click on Done and move on to the next part, and that's adding audio to our creation. Now I realize that our clips aren't 30 seconds, and that's okay. We're going to add our music and we can add some more clips to fill that out and then fine tune the editing after that. Now to add music, iMovie likes to connect with the other things in the iLife um, suite. These are these buttons over here on the right hand side. If I click on the little uh, musical note, it brings up the music inspector and it's connecting to uh, iMovie sound effects, iLife sound effects, GarageBand, or iTunes. I'm going to connect to iTunes, but just like your iMac in the computer lab, there's probably nothing in the iTunes library. So let's hide this for now. I'm going to go under the iMovie menu and select 
hide iMovie. And you remember that 30 second piece of footage that I found, it was number 20. I'm going to add that to iMovie. iMovie should be in the, excuse me, iTunes should be in the dock. If I click once to launch that, your screen may look like this, although you may get a uh, like a message asking you to uh, agree to the terms. That's fine. Click on agree. And if a, a window comes up asking if you want to learn more about that, uh, you can follow through and learn uh, the ins and outs of iPhoto or iTunes, any of those. But at some point, close it so that we can see the music library for iTunes. Now from the finder, I'm going to drag this sound file into the music library and right away it's going to show up in the iTunes list the library of music. I can select it once, click on play. That's the tune that I selected. Let's go back to iMovie and there it shows up in my iTunes selection for the music library there's the music file 20 audio track. I'm going to click and hold this and when I get the little uh, ghost image of the sound file I'm going to drag it up into my project area when it all turns green I'm going to release the mouse and that's going to become this portion of my clip. Looks like actually <laughs> I've been making my uh, clips too long. Well, one of the things we want to do is adjust the audio. I know that these tracks from Digital Juice tend to be really loud. If I click on the play button right here in the bottom of the project library, it's going to play from the beginning. Not bad, but still a little bit loud. I want to adjust uh, that volume level. The way that you do that is with this button right here, and this is to uh, hide or show the audio waveform. The audio waveform is a visual representation of the volume of the music piece. And I can see this on my timeline. I'm going to move the cursor over this line to the point where it changes to a little uh, edit arrow and then drag down so that those audio peaks are below the gray line. That gray line represents the normal music level for video projects which is minus 12 decibels. So just so it comes up and kind of touches that or is uh, slightly above, mostly below and I'm going to let go. Now let's click on the play button and hear it from the beginning. I didn't make a big adjustment, but it is going to make a difference if we were to put this online or if we make projects for broadcast television. They need to be at that exact amount. So with this uh, selected, one of the things that we want to do is uh, add a little professionalism to our project and that is to have our edits change to the beat of the music. And the way they, we do that is a little gear uh, tool right here. I'm going to select the clip trimmer. The clip trimmer window lets me have a little bit more precision in changing the audio file. I can see here that our audio file actually fades out at this point and so it's really this two extra seconds is unnecessary. I'm going to drag my out point a little bit closer to the real fade point of the music. The other thing that I want to do in this particular uh, window is to add markers where the music beats land. So I'm going to click on the, uh, I'm going to uh, click on this, it goes to the beginning, put my playhead at the beginning, I'm going to click on play, this means play current segment, 
and as it's going, I'm going to click on the M key. If I go up under the clip menu, I can see that there's a command for add beat marker when the M key is selected. I'm going to add the M key as a shortcut to the beat of the music, kind of like I'm uh, just tapping and, and uh, playing along with the music. Few more. All right, we don't have to go through the whole thing. You get the idea. So you can see there's very small dots that make up markers in the music to the beat of the music. Now if I close this window, up in the project area, I'm going to double click on the area between those two clips to bring down the precision editor window. I want to edit these to the beats of the music and I, to see those I need to click on this button right here. This is the Hider Show Extras and that's going to show the beats to the music right down here. In order to change this, I'm going to take my edit tool, I'm going to drag it earlier to get more in here to this particular beat. I can zoom in or zoom out with the little slider right down here. And maybe I want to make this clip a little bit shorter. So I'm going to drag this one. Oh, I don't have enough clip there. I drag up on this one, excuse me to make this one shorter. Here's the title between here. And I'm going to move this one shorter and I'm going to snap to one of those dots that's to the beat of the music. Maybe it's easier if we zoom in just a touch more. I'm going to use this button here to jump to the next edit point. This one's at the edge of its media. I'm going to drag this earlier to be at a music beat. Click on this button to go to the next edit. Drag earlier to go to a music beat. And I think that's pretty good. I'm going to click on done. Go back and look at my project. I'm going to click this play button to start from the beginning. And we can stop there. That was a little bit longer clip. Perhaps we'll change that one uh, moving ahead here. Okay, one of the next things that we can do to add interest to our clip are some transitions. Now, over in this inspector area, I'm going to change from music to this clip, uh, this little button right here. And this is setting a lot of different types of transitions. Here's a ripple transition. As we mouse over these, I gives a little sample. Fade to white. Fade to white is kind of nice because it, it looks like a uh, camera shutter. I'm going to drag this up into my project and put it right in between two clips. You can see the green line. And what that's going to do is put in a little square that represents the transition between there. Let's move our skimmer in front of this clip. Press the space bar and watch the change. Let's try another one. Here's one called Spin Out. I'm going to drag that up and put it between these clips right here and let go. Snap to Beats is enabled. This action will cause existing clips out of sync. Let's go with it for now and we'll adjust later. Move the skimmer over this clip. Press play. There's the spin out 
action. By double clicking on, the, on that uh, transition, we see the inspector window and we can change the duration. These are 15 frames. If we change and type in 30 and hit the tab key, that'll be uh, 30 frames or one second. Uh, overlapping, transition spin out. At this point, we could uh, even change to be a different transition right within the inspector window. Click on done and move our skimmer and hit the space bar. And we can see how that transition turned out. Now when you're doing these projects, part of learning uh, to use iMovie is to create the transitions, create the effects on your own. If when you're done with this project you want to experiment and try some other projects that use the built-in themes, that would be a lot of fun to do. So with the project selected, go under the File menu and select Project Theme. From this, there's lots of other themes that can be applied. One of the funnest ones is a comic book. So if we click on OK after we get a little preview there, this will go ahead and apply those effects to our clips in this particular project. If I click on the play button to start at the beginning, it puts in that very first title page and some of these other transitions that are built into that particular project. So you can have fun experimenting with those themes after you finish this project. There's more to come. Hang in there.